Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Today we get fed both by the word of God and the body and blood of Christ and then after worship with a chicken meal that we can take home to eat. Uh, hopefully no one is skipping church to get in line to get the meal because those of you who are worshiping with us in person will have a separate line as you leave worship for you to um, get your meal. So uh, it's exciting that they are putting together this chicken meal and all the proceeds are going to help with our signing project fund as we re -side part of the education building of our church space. So it's great that things are happening and it is a wonderful sunny day to have us working together as the body of Christ. Uh, things that are happening coming up. First off is next Sunday. There is our last Sunday of Sunday school for pre-K through second grade and remembering to honor mothers for Mother's Day. We also have a work day coming up on Wednesday, May 12th from 5 to 7. And we're going to spruce up the curb appeal of the front of our church with some flowers. And then we're going to deliver some potted plants to some of our shut-ins and homebound members and uh, just do some sprucing up of the outside to make it welcoming as people come into our worship space. The last thing from our, or two things from our bulletin that I want to highlight is there's two voting members are needed for Synod Assembly. This year's Synod Assembly is on Saturday, May 22nd. It is online, so you need to have an email to be able to participate in the voting for Synod Assembly. Another thing I want to highlight, coming up, we're going to have a noisy offering collection that's on May 23rd, which is Pentecost, and May 30th for our sister companion synod in India, who is really struggling in the world right now with COVID, but also this time of year, they are struggling with lots of flooding. And we are gathering with, or doing this offering with other congregations around our synod, and part of our worship and offering for our synod assembly is going towards that. If every congregation in our synod has put something towards this offering towards our sister companion synod, we could raise so much money. So bring and cult, start collecting your dimes and nickels and quarters for that noisy offering collection. I believe that's going to be my all my announcements. You can look in the bulletin for reminders for that. Uh, this Sunday, we are also blessing our cults as we send those out. I think that's everything I'm going to say. So then we'll begin our worship service with confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry, draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to rebuild what we have ruined, mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing blood. Make us alive in the spirit, follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restore the world you saw. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven. God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Together we join in our opening hymn, uh, hymn number 379.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as a divine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his presence, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Do we have someone coming up for the blessing of the quilts? Okay. Well, I have a blessing here. As the quilters have finished the quilting season, I think it's a season of the year in our church, the quilting season. Let us take time to bless the quilts before they're sent on to provide care and comfort and warmth to those who are in need of it. As you're able, please touch a quilt that is in your pew or in front of your pew as we lay and pray over them. God, our neighbors around the world are in need of hope. Your spirit is a mighty force. Your whispers of hope bring light into the world. Open our hearts and hands to see your presence in our neighborhoods and across the world. We give thanks for the pieces of fabric, thread, sewing machines, and items collected. May their presence be a sign of hope. May these quilts wrap our neighbors in unending love, and they may they bring dignity and healing. We give thanks for the hands that have fashioned hope into a quilt, for the hands that collected, sorted, and the hands who continually open wider so that no one feels left out. God, be with our neighbors who receive these gifts. May they be wrapped in love. May they taste your goodness. May they touch signs of your hope. Whether or not we know their names or where they live, they are our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who is our hope. Amen. We continue our worship service with our scripture reading. Did the battery die? All right. The first reading is from the eighth chapter of Acts, beginning with the 26th verse. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon coming to faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a count official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? 
He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Um, we will read Psalm 22, 25 to 31 and responsibly. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the rule of our grace, may their hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the nations will bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord. Who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the house, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord. Who they shall bring the churches to the They shall proclaim God's deliverance to the people yet unborn. Saying to them, the Lord is dead. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, beginning with the second. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God, whom we have not seen, while hating fellow Christians, whom we regularly see. Love toward God is to be matched by love toward others, because the essence of God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the alone sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. This, or the commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We have a children's sermon, and Lauren and Addie, I want you to bring up Derek, because I need his help for this one. Olivia, I saw you. <clears throat> Come up, Derek. I need your help. You're the perfect person for a text that talks about vines and farming. Okay. I brought a plant here from my house. Now, I know you're really smart, and I bet you're, do you like farming? You got cows at home right now? Yeah. Do you name the cows at home? No. Does your sister name the cows at home? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if we have a plant, what do we need for a plant to grow? Seeds. Seeds. Yeah. You need the seeds of the plant. What do we have in here? Leaves. Branches. Not the branches. Olivia, do you know what this is? Dirt. Or dirt. What else do you need for a plant to grow? Water. Water. And one other thing. If it's outside, you have sun. Yes. So if we're like plants, we need dirt to hold us in and provide good nutrients. And we need water and sun. Jesus is like the dirt. He holds us together and gives us a strong place for us to grow. And then the sun and the water is like worship and reading scripture. It provides us with the things we need to grow. So if we're like plants, we need Jesus. We need the Bible. We need worship. We need prayer. Because sometimes, even if we got all of it, we need some prayer to help us grow. All right. Well, what, what do you know what you guys are planting out at your house? Are you planting vegetables yet? Not yet? Are you planting anything in the field, Lauren, Addie? No? Is your grandpa or your aunts and uncles? Something? <laughs> I know guys, you guys are far. <laughs> you got the cows though. All right, we're going to pray for all the plants that are going to start growing. So can you fold your hands? I'm going to look to adults. Are they folding their hands? All right, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, help us to grow. Help us to grow. Help the plants to grow. Help the plants to grow. That we may have food. That we may have food. And grow big. Grow big. And have a good farming season. And have a good farming season. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. I'm so glad we had that future farmer in here because I knew he could have the answers. If you get me talking about farming and plants, you'll see that I have a deep love for it. At this time of year, I think about school days where it's time for projects to be happening or you might get out to do a school field trip the season that maybe you could go someplace. Even if it's just across town, I saw on online that some kids had 
recently gone out to Holters to study the plants. There's many things going on with that. Well, in, even in college, you have some science experiments or places that you may go. One of my favorite lab activities was in my horticulture class, my first year of college. I took this class because it was really interesting to me. And I took it with a bunch of pre-med seniors who are using it as their easy plant science class. And as me as a freshman, I was super interested and they were just like, I showed up to class. <laughs> But it was interesting topics, and they too learned many new things. We got to talk about fruit trees and the basics of growing them and grafting them together. We took two different apple trees and we grafted them together to create a much stronger, stable apple tree. And as it was the end, this in the spring semester, at the end of our course we were able to take our apple tree seedling, or little planting, home and plant them in our own yard. So my dad got another apple tree in his yard. I love talking about and doing things with grafting tree because there is so much potential for growing and creating produce that will thrive better. You can take grafted parts from a tree, maybe some part of a tree that needed pruning and graft them onto another one to have a plant flourish. When I think about that particularly, I think about rose bushes and how people always share their rose bushes by taking a cutting from the bush and planting and giving it to someone else so they too may see the beauty of it. My horticulture class was one of those classes where each lab project or trip around or on campus sparked curiosity of the potential possibilities to improve not only on food protection, production, but on landscape architecture. It was a class where the professor was so excited to share all the little details about the possibilities of what could be happening. We took little trips around campus to see all the tulips growing and learned about the tulips and how you had to separate them and so that they would continue to grow. He made us walk through two feet of snow into the backyard of his house so he, we could see a tree and how he was protecting it from the rabbits. The Canadian students that we forgot that we were going on a walking field trip wore their sandals, but Canadians can walk through snow in sandals. He showed slides about how he stopped on the side of the road to take these pictures of plants that were having some sort of disease and the possibility of how do you solve this problem. Jersey's daughters were always annoyed that he had to pull over to the side of the road to look at a tree. But I get it. it I understand it, and it excites me too. I can connect with it. Farming and producing food is connected to so many stories and descriptions of God in the Bible. There are metaphors and analogies in the Bible that are great ways that God uses the biblical writers to provide wisdom and insight into who God is and what it means to be part of God's world. In the gospel lesson today, Jesus is compared to a vine, with us, the people of God, as the branches. I'll describe three parts of the metaphor. There's so many other parts, but here are three parts. God is the caretaker who cares for us. Jesus, the vine, we rely on, and we, the branches, produce good fruit. God is the caretaker who cares for the vine through the pruning of unproductive branches, I automatically think of water sprouts on the trees, popping up from the ground. You prune and remove the water sprouts because they hinder the productiveness of the tree. Pruning helps the plant grow and is often required in order to provide the best production of fruit. God takes an active role in caring for us to guide us 
and remove the parts that are harmful, just like pruning. Yet we often react badly when we know or cannot see the parts that need to be pruned. Because we cannot prune ourselves, but God will do it out of love. And the pruning leaves us with an open wound for a little while. We don't continue to rely on God. It can fester. It's like when we want to hold on to sin and chaos and selfishness that in the long run does not do anything for us. It's why we need to find our strength from the vine as Jesus. The vine is what the branches rely on. Without the strength from the vine, the branches cannot hold up much less bear good fruit. Jesus, the sustainer, is the life-giving source whom we depend on. And as God cares for us, we are molded and shaped to produce what God has created us for. God's word and truth in Jesus Christ is what is life-giving. If you abide in Jesus, you are not going to stay the same. You're going to grow and change. Hearing, seeing, witnessing, and believing in Jesus' love for us, that we are freed from sin, not by our own merit, but by grace, changes you. The more you grow and come to accept Jesus and his love and grace, the stronger the branch you will be. And the stronger the branch holds more good producing fruit. In this metaphor, as us as the branches are to be producing the good fruit for God, because producing the good fruit for God glorifies God. What is good fruit? Good fruit is not simply the good works of acts of kindness and compassion. We can see others who do not love God, who are doing great, loving acts of kindness. But that is not the fruit of the Spirit, because there is no eternal abundance that comes from it. Good fruit relies on the Spirit of God developing it with God, harvesting it. Fruit of the Spirit comes from being rooted in Jesus Christ, like my plant rooted in the soil. The fruit gives blessing beyond the immediate worldly satisfaction. It has eternal life. Good fruits is evidence of being Jesus' disciples. Good fruits is the loving and caring actions for God's world, and those actions carry on to God's kingdom for eternal life with God. Not producing good fruits means you better look to see if you're reacting to the knowledge that Jesus died and rose from the grave for your sins to be forgiven and that you do have eternal life. Producing good fruit is our responsibility as a community and our individual discipleship. If we are rooted in God, it's inevitable that we bear love because God is love. We are reliant on the vine of Jesus who connects us together, that we are not only sustained by Jesus, but are one in Christ. Showing and living together, bearing fruit that provides for God's kingdom because we are not for the individual, but for the whole body of Christ. Metaphors and stories only carry us so far into coming to know God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes these metaphors really work for us because we can relate to the object or the dynamic of how we are connected to each other or connected to God with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The farming stories and the metaphors about pruning and growing crops don't connect with everyone because not everyone is connected to the land and their food in that way. But in this community, a lot of us are. You could tell by how excited I was to share with you about pruning and how my love of horticulture and apple trees how we grafted together that I get this metaphor that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. All this, though, is reliant on accepting Jesus into your heart and allowing for that love from God to be known and allowing for it to grow in you. And when you come to know love, you come to know God, and when you will produce good fruits, because that's what love does. Love grows like a vine, reaching out to spread and create space 
for more branches to form and for fruit to produce. Love produces the good fruit. Jesus is the vine. You are the branches. In Christ, produce good fruit. Amen. Together we praise God with our hymn of the day. Hymn number 377.
Tiga tentang ini, kalau mau with the Father, through Him all things, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, He rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word, and give us yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, May we seek vital connections among all that depend on the earth for life. Protect the earth and protect us as your created from the, the seasons of changing weather, from the dry spots and the fires, from the flooded lands and hurricanes. Protect your creation and God us be protectors. Protect us from the harms that come. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you showed us to be a servant. Continue to bless our ministries to serve you and each other. Bless those who work to provide us with meals. And bless the quilters and sewers for their hands and time crafting warm quilts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence that they lead not by fear but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. We especially ask you to provide for the needs and healing for those that we name out loud in our, our hearts and community. For Jerry, Brent, and Lisa, Linda, Sheila, George, Mark, Mary, Terry, and Roberta. Others that we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. Be with the family and friends of Audrey Hogan. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you. Trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. We extend that peace to those who continue to worship with us online. Peace be with you. And we extend that peace from the Lord to those who are working to provide a meal for us today. Those who are with us outside of the grills. At this time in our service, we give thanks for our offering and the gifts that were given to us that we return to the Lord in service. <clears throat> God of love, you called us beloved children. Welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us. Send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give 
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our right. thanks and praise.
Let us pray. Well, spring up joy through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger that's still around us. Send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you the spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn, hymn number 679. to get in line with all the other vehicles. So go and be fed after being fed with the word of God.